To continue these videos where I'm introducing guitars that I've been working on, today I'm going to talk about this hollow body that has taken me almost a year to finish. Uh, I'm not too proud of that, but <laughs> it is what it is. Well, th this guitar here I think is extra special because it comes along with a very interesting story. The farm where I have my shop, the farm where I live now, uh, as you might know if you listen to any other video of mine, belonged to my grandpa. And my grandpa was a farmer in many, many ways. He did uh, cows, he did horses, and he also, of course, did fruits. And one of the main things that he planted here was passion fruit. If you know anything about passion fruit, um, not that you should, but if you do, you might know it's a vine, so it needs things to climb on. And he planted all over this farm a tree called, well, I don't know what the name in English is, but uh, I suspect it's Mother of Cacao. Which it's doing my research online. It seems to be that that's what it is in English. But here locally, they call it Nuca Raton. Now, none of the locals think this is good lumber. They think it's great natural fencing because you can cut a branch, put it on the ground, and a tree will grow but nobody's gonna build anything out of it. And I understand why. The, the branches, the young tree, the sapwood, is, it's just terrible. It's just too soft, it gets bugs in a minute. And uh, yeah, you would be wasting your time if you build anything with it. But when it gets old, and I'm gonna put a video, not a video, a picture here of the tree, how it changes the look, the, 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 it just looks different. I, I thought it was a different species. When it gets old, the core, the heart, now that's good stuff. I have a, a little bit of the heart here. Uh, this is sapwood, this, this part of the, I don't know if you can see it on camera that well, but this is sapwood and this is the heart. And you can see how the sound changes from, from, from sapwood to the heart. Now, the heart is great. Turns out in some other countries, they make flooring out of it, to give you an idea. And as it so happens, I have hundreds of these trees here, hundreds. So um, I took a chainsaw to uh, a, maybe like an acre <laughs> and we started uh, planting in the, in the middle of COVID, we started doing this. We started planting uh, bananas and plantains and all sorts of things with my stepdad. But all those trees, I was like, yeah, I don't feel like uh, they should become firewood. And uh, so I started making slabs out of them. Not very, not very big because in my experience, I don't know how long it would take for the tree to get big, but they're never too thick. Like the thickest one I've ever found was about there. And of course you have a certain amount of sapwood and then the heart, which is the good stuff. So this guitar, as I said, is my first experiment using this wood, this new material that I found. The, the top is made out of uh, laurel. Uh, it's not. It's not laurel. That's not a translation. I, I'm. I'm gonna put it on on text somewhere here because I, I I used to remember the name <laughs> uh, in English, but I forgot now. And uh, but the rest is yuca raton. This uh, tail piece is yuca raton. As you can tell, it's holding the tension, and it's and it has a the design has a big hole in the center, and it's super hard, so you can do that. The bridge is made out of yucca raton, obviously with, with bone uh, saddles. The pickups are made out of yucca raton. The knobs are made out of yucca raton. This armrest, which is something that I added uh, actually a couple of days ago, it's made out of yucca raton. And that's because uh, on this design, I, I was my, my forearm was kind of digging in there as I was playing. And so I felt I needed something. And I really like this addition. It makes it look a little retro as well. Uh, which I think goes along with uh, with my artistic vision, <laughs> if I can say that. Uh, now the, the the sides of the guitar are made out of mahogany, and this is of course spray painted black. I think the contrast uh, looks great. Back again is laurel. That's not the name. Like I said, I'll give you the name. This is made out of yucca uh, raton. I just dropped my a button. Let me get that really quick. Um, the fretboard is made out of yucca raton as well. It's bound, uh, it's a bound fretboard, but the sides uh, are made out of uh, mahogany. So yucca raton with mahogany binding. The headstock is a matching laurel. Now, uh, something I, I, I never tried before, but I think it came out great, and I'm really happy I did so. 
These are Grover tuners, but as you might know, Grover tuners don't come with wooden uh, pegs. And I actually made these myself because I felt like they didn't match the lumberjackish, very natural wood look of the guitar. Um, yeah, so let me show you what just fell, so you know why that happened. This is the bolt where the ground goes into the electronics. It's connected to the wire to here. Um, and also holds the tailpiece back. But I, I didn't like that look, so I made this little button, and it's held by a magnet, um, and it goes in there and it kind of hides it. I think it makes it, look, makes it look a little more pristine, in my opinion. Um, the guitar is very simple. There's like This is like a P90-ish kind of pickup that I, I designed. Initially, I had made them with the ceramic. Now they're Alnico 5s. I think they sound great. And uh, it has a simple volume tone with a, with a three-way. Um, what else can I tell you about this guitar? Uh, ah, even though I told you this, this was loaded, I didn't tell you where it came from. Uh, this would actually belong to a band. Yeah. Um, I, there was a bed that was decommissioned, and I saw the slabs, the ones that hold the mattress, just kind of sitting there in storage, and I was like, hey, that looks, that looks pretty uh, solid. Let me, let me cut into it. And when I did, I found a beautiful uh, pattern, so I book matched it, and that's what you're seeing here. And uh, it's not as hard as you can have but it's playing hard for, for what it's currently doing. So... <clears throat> Anyways, uh, one of the things I wanted to try with this guitar is to, to make something that I could uh, not have to plug to, to do some practicing. So, it's loud enough for me to look, work out a song or something. It's an, obviously not an acoustic guitar, but uh, I would say it's just as loud as those little tiny uh, practice amps that some people buy that you, know, you keep in the guitar case. Um, it is a fully hollow body. The, the, the sides were cut uh, by hand into the shape and then I glued uh, top and back to it. So uh, there is no center core or, or anything like that. I was a little worried that the tension was going to be too much, but it's, it's been like this for months and months before I, I officially finished it. And it holds, uh, holds tension without problem. Another change I did, which is it's not usual, but I think I'm going to start doing that on my new builds, is the, the adjustment for the truss rod is right here. It's in the front. Usually it's right here in the back. But I wanted to try to make the guitar here uh, a little skinnier. And when you put a truss rod on this side, uh, I think uh, best practice is to add a, a, a big uh, volute, volute, I don't know how you say it, uh, because this becomes like a weak point of the guitar. Ideally, you never want to drop it, but, you know, it can happen. So having a, a, a very thin neck, if your uh, thrust rod is going through the top, is I don't think it's, it's such a good idea. Anyways, so I'm gonna go ahead and go get my amplifier, play a little bit for you, so you can check out the sounds I get out of it, and uh, we'll go from there. Okay, so just like the other demos, I'm gonna do my best to play uh, as neatly as I can so you can hear the different tones you can probably get out of this guitar um, but I also want to do that before I I crank the amp and, and have you listen how the pickup sound how it sounds electronically I wanted to strum really loudly like this uh, so you get an idea of um, acoustically how much you you can hear it so I said uh, towards the beginning of the video that you probably don't need to have a, a practice sound with this guitar. You can just uh, practice your licks and your scales right there. So I think that's a definite plus. Um, one thing I do, I do want to say, if you think my strap is terrible, is because it is my belt. I don't know where the strap that I normally use it went. So I'm using my belt, the thing that's supposed to hold my pants, as my strap. All right, so uh, let's get to some sounds then. We're gonna start at the bridge. I'm gonna do some strumming. Again, this guitar to me would be ideal for a singer-songwriter, somebody who you know gets on stage to sing his songs with a with a, normally an acoustic guitar, but you know now he can get just as loud as the rest of the band. That that's kind of the I guess the, the vision I had when I started to make this guitar. So I'm gonna be doing a lot of strummy stuff, and then I am going to put distortion, and we'll hear it how it can break up. Um, 
in my opinion, it does a pretty good job uh, with distortion, but of course, it's not gonna be anything near what you need for playing a, a heavy rock or metal show. You'll, you'll get away with pop rock, I think so. We'll see. Or classic rock. Maybe that's more accurate. So, so right now we're at the bridge position and I just have some reverb on. That's it. That's going to be the best position, and I'm sure you'll notice when we do that. So, same breath. singing a song and, and playing singing some writer stuff let's call it singing some writer stuff <laughs> uh, low gain makes more sense than high gain uh, and again that's kind of the vision here with the guitar I have to say that this is a little addition I love it I love it because if, if my arm just sits there perfectly and it doesn't hurt you know which was uh, when I first made it I was like ah that's not comfortable it felt like those old tellies you know that have that hard border, border um, I know some people might hate me for saying that, but it's just a, it's just a fact, you know. The, the strat kind of fix that issue. Um, at any rate, here's some distortion. We're gonna start with the bridge. <laughs> I think 
uh, yeah, that kind of reminded me of that. Uh, <laughs> This bridge is free floating, meaning that uh, it's not in pose, it's not it's sitting on top of the of the guitar top. So for doing intonations, it's a little tricky, but not too much. Um, you basically tune the first string, the last string, that's it. Leave the others kind of loose. Then move the bridge till they're both intonated, and then you can tune everything, and then everything's in, you know everything's intonated. So that, that's how that works. It was uh, quite a bit of, of sneaking up on the. <laughs> the position to, to get that to happen, but it did, uh, very time consuming. But I think it looks great. It kind of gives that, uh, again, that uh, raw singer-songwriter look that I, that, I, that I was really going for. All right, and that's gonna be the end of the video. If you're still here, thank you so much for sticking with me. I know these videos are long, but I really don't know how to make them any shorter. Um, if you have any questions about the guitar, or if you wanna give me some suggestions, some things that you would've done different, by, by all means, I, I, I love talking to people and I love learning. Uh, so let me know in the comments. And I guess I'll see you guys in the next video.